Welcome back, WMST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. I have uh, picked up my coal roofing mug here. I got my Rofo coffee rocking it for Festivus this week, but I have not brought out the purple lights. I have, uh, I've been very, very uh, sort of humble and modest and very, very muted in my – I mean, I'm enthusiastic. I'm all about it, but – it is a little different that, like, I would probably have five buses going to Buffalo this week. We'd be uh, piling into the Anchor Bar, having beef on weck, and, uh, you know, in the old days, crossing the Peace Bridge, and probably have an old hoot nanny north of the border in Toronto as well. Way, maybe. Even. Yeah, you know, but um, Mike Rosigliano is here. Uh, you know, I don't even – we're sick. I don't even know what to call you other than, like, you're sort of like family, right? Like, I mean, you know, I met you in 1984. You knew me before my son was born, yeah. um, and I have, over the holidays, found all of the cartoons, all the little inside jokes, all the proper pup stuff, uh, all of the Jesus reaching down with Frank Reich's face over my <laughs> bed on Kane Street during the uh, Bills Oilers. Yes. Um, and you know, and I even I even brought this out recently. I mean, how many cartoons have you drawn, Rasik? Oh my! I you know more cartoons than hats, and that's saying a lot because I have six thousand hats, so so way more than uh, six thousand cartoons for a lot of different publications. So there's a there's a big stockpile of them. If anyone ever wants any hats uh, or a cartoon, they're here. <laughs> well, you know what, man, and I I have not said this publicly, but I'm going to say it to you because I love you and we've been friends forever. I have started to like clean up my life. Like I'm 52. I have so much stuff. You know what right. I mean? Just like stuff. Like a couple of weeks ago, we were on a sales call and uh, a gal said, I interviewed you 20 years ago for our CCBC, you know, media edition. And I, you know, went back and I found like pictures of what I used to look like when I was young, you know, uh, and, yeah. and, and I found this and I've been showing this one all week and I know you'll appreciate this. That's my dude there. That's David Modell. Oh, yeah. There you Party go. Trophy 20 years ago this month, just like sure. where the Mayflowers were. So wheezing and geezing and having friends like you, Mike, uh, all these years that, like, I try to go back to the beginning of, like, how all this starts. So the Buffalo Bills are really – the center point probably of our friendship and us working together. Uh, we, when I met you, we had just lost the Colts. We we're in the process of losing the Colts. My internship started in January of 84. And then I was without a team. And you had a really good team. <laughs> and you had moved here, right? So, like, you and I, we've gotten on, in, in your car, in my car. We've driven to Buffalo. I was taunting Amy Trask on Twitter last week because I found the ticket stub from the 51-3 to Jay Schrader game, which is my first game at Rich Stadium. Still one of my – I've only been to two – I've never been to a Super Bowl. I've been to two championship games, both against the Raiders, of course, the, the, the trouncing we went to uh, on the eve of the Gulf War, if you remember. Uh, I do remember that. And, uh, and then the, the Ravens uh, beating the, the Raiders out in Oakland. So, so – uh, and you were there for both. Teams. By the way, by the way, when Norwood missed the kick, yeah. I was sitting about three feet behind you. Like I was in your living room. I would literally, when he, right, when the kick was missed, we were together. We were having wings, right? Secret anchor bar recipe. When we were in Buffalo the week before, right? We, we went to the championship game and we threw this red, white, and blue Bills party in your home, right? For everyone, for your whole neighborhood. Yes, of course. Exactly. I mean, that's my neighborhood's great. And, and you know, for this game coming up, I got to believe that if the Ravens don't win the game and Buffalo does, my neighborhood will, will jump on Buffalo as they're, as they're rooting into us. Well, that, the interesting that's, thing that's, I, that's been the case uh, in all those years in the 90s when the, when the Bills went to the Super Bowl. But the Ravens have never played the Bills in a big game. I mean, you, you've adopted the Ravens in 1996, right, Rasik? So 84 to 96, you'd lived here a dozen years. You'd lost a couple of Super Bowls. I was there with you along the way. I never made it to a Super Bowl, by the way. You know, the Oilers never made it. 
ever, <laughs> you know. So you're an Oilers fan until they were until Patrick. they were the Titans. They made it, and I wore my <laughs> Oilers jersey, and they came a foot away. You know, through that, that's true. So you know this Titans Ravens thing, and you know I've been talking all week about the the Ravens players doing a split on the Titans logo, which I'm sure Tony Saragusa and Ray Lewis loved, and you know, yes. Fandom is fun, man, and, you know, this plague's been a bitch. You and I have gotten together. Terry, my wife, we got together a few times, socially distanced down, literally yeah. on the corner in Fells Point watching Ed Lauer. We've had a few beers together Eddie, this my, summer. My, our buddy, Ed, he's, it's, it, I, you know, we miss live music, and we love seeing Eddie those couple of times. It was great. Well, you know, but, but Buffalo and Baltimore, like, that's your life. Like, your, your wife's – give the Buffalo story because you went to Buff State. You met your – you have, like, such an incredible story of beautiful children. I, I, there's, there's a rumor – hold on – on the Christmas card that maybe something's going on about grandparenting. Is that happening here in 21? Uh, that is happening. We're very fired up about that. So, uh, uh, nice. Yes, I, Terry is born in Buffalo. So, Terry's all in on the bills for this weekend. Not uh, Buffalo, Depew, Depew. Uh, she's not really Depew. She's more in the city, but her sister lives in Depew. Uh, you know, one of my boys was born in Buffalo, Steve, and, and Tup born here. And, of course, I'm born in Brooklyn. So, yeah, I went to school up in Buffalo. Terry also went to that same school, but we never met there. And I worked for the newspaper in Buffalo for about five years before coming down to uh, to to Baltimore. So where in Brooklyn yeah, heart, were you from? Heart, I've known you my heart, whole heart. life, thirty six years. I I know you were from. I didn't know you were from. I thought you were from Long Island. Funny enough. Yeah, born in Brooklyn, and then moved to Long Island when I was four. So so. Where I did had, you grow up? What was your Massapequa, Hampstead? Where was your place? Isla, uh, Ronkonkoma, and then the Port Jeff area. So we kind of moved our way out towards further out. Further did you ever east. go to an Islanders game? Uh, I've been to a couple of Islanders games. Yeah, I was a Mets fan growing up. Uh, my dad was a Brooklyn Dodgers fan, of course, and then forbade us to root for the Dodgers when they moved to L.A. So we have that kind of a synchronicity going with Indy and, and uh, Baltimore here. Uh, yeah, where, where uh, you know, I'm a New Yorker at heart, uh, but – I've lived here, a, you know, the longest stretch of my life has been in, in Baltimore. And for Terry, that threshold, she crossed that threshold a few years ago. So she's lived here longer than any place in her life, too. Well, I mean, I don't I know Baltimore. any bigger Ravens fans than you guys. But this was a week where, like, I wanted to have you on, A, because I love you and you're my friend and you were the first guest I had in the new studio six and a half years ago. And then I realized, like, I don't think I've had you on since. And I sort of take you for granted in that way because, like, you know a lot about sports. You're fun about all of that. But, like, the history part of this city and sports because of what you were subjected to in the front door meeting so many people, you know, at, at Sports First and then at the, at the News American and, uh, and at the Evening Sun and being there and all the ancillary from me and press. You, you literally know, Steve Jeppy, everybody. I mean, the Ravens have hired you. The Orioles have hired you. Your work is everywhere. It's sort of ubiquitous, quite frankly. I mean, your stuff just sort of shows up. But, like, <laughs> you know, you're associated with Baltimore for most people. And most people don't know you like I know you. They, like, if I show them this, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's for sake, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, for, for you all these years with the Ravens, you have such a rich history with this. That, and, I, and I haven't told this story in a long time, but when I went to the Super Bowl in 92, the first ever Super Bowl, you gave me all of your Bills gear. So I had, and I'm wearing these to honor you today. I'm wearing, um, these are camo because I don't have the Zubaz anymore. But, you know, the Bills always wore the Zubaz pants. You yeah. gave me Zubaz pants, a Bills hat, proper. And when I met Warren Moon in 1992 at the Super Bowl, and I hated the Redskins. So this was more an act. I was an Oiler fan. This was more of an act of support for you trying to get you to a Super Bowl because I think you'd already lost two or three by then, right? And I was yeah. going, and they were playing the Redskins. And, you know, there's a whole generation here that don't even appreciate, like, how much we dislike the Redskins and why I would ever be spotted in Bills gear. Dude, there are pictures of me and Warren Moon wearing your Bills crap. 
Oh, and awesome. literally, you know, I mean, a Hall of Famer. That's great. That's, 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 that's great stuff. I love, I love it. I mean, I'll always remember that, that those couple of visits with you as an Oilers fan, one where Bill's fans stomped on your glasses and took your glasses off and stomped on your glasses. I don't remember I, that. But. Oh, come on. On an on a on a local sports cast that oh that was a TV th- I, re- I remember that we were walking around the city it was New Year's Eve and I was the only guy in an Oiler jersey yeah yeah right. yeah I remember that of course I, I wish mean, we had footage I, of I that I fired you for it you know you were willing to come into you know a hostile territory with the, I mean maybe the only Oilers fan that doesn't yeah. live in Houston that was in the country I don't know well but the weirdest was, yeah. part is I fell in love that night right I mean I met a girl. <laughs> <laughs> who I lived with for a couple of years. This is back in the 1980s. And she went to Geneseo State. So I wound up driving in this, in this Caprice Classic 1977 green, pea green with the brown. I mean, it looks right out of vacation. Like, I wish I had a picture of it because it was literally Brady Bunch. And I would, this thing got like seven miles to the gallon. And I drove this to Geneseo, New York, I was, because you took me to Buffalo. Buffalo <laughs> has been good to me. Buffalo has been hard on me. You see, I, I, so right. here's the deal this week, and this is true. I had flights on Saturday. I was going to go up. And, you know, you have to get COVID tested in the state of New York in order to go into the game. And you know how much I love sports, man. Like, our lives from kissing Morgana in your living room to watching the Bills lose. I mean, we've known each other forever. You know how much I love sports? Right now, I... I, I'm just not going to do it. I, I'm not getting on a plane to fly to Buffalo Saturday to get something stuck up my nose to maybe be able to go in, to maybe not be able to go in, to what, whatever pain in the ass it's going to be, to sit in the heated press box above the Bill Stadium where you and I have – like, I've been in that stadium a dozen times, and it's always, like, a thing. You know what I mean? It's a thing to go to a Bills game. Absolutely. And I, I don't know that I want to – I mean, I went down to Houston and I sat in a game with no one. I'm one of the few people that have ever done that, right? Sure. And, and I went to Philly where they had a handful of people. I was in Washington where they had no one. And it's good on TV. And I have a flight to Kansas City next week. And you know what I mean? I have a flight to Tampa now. I took the Buffalo points and I put them in Tampa. And I said, you know what? I just – so I'm not going. And, and like I said to my wife, my favorite part of going to Buffalo is going to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, well – Buffalo's got its, its good points too. I told I told Mike Bellani, your buddy, that uh, you might be there this week because he's is he's he still be, in Buffalo? He's gonna be at the game. He's gonna be at the game. Man, you had so give me your Buffalo background. You like you were a cartoonist there for the Courier Express, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? That's correct. So I I, I worked at the Courier and uh, for for the five years, and it folded, of course, and that and then I ended up here. Like you now, said. you got a gig as a sports cartoonist there, though, right? Like, not as a regular. You never did politics or anything like that. No, I mean, you did I mean, comedy in fact, and stuff, but... In fact, uh, I worked alongside uh, Tom Tolles, who's one of the great uh, editorial cartoonists. He ended up at the Washington Post. He just retired. He's won the Pulitzer uh, wow. as, as an editorial cartoonist. He's got some of the greatest liberal uh, point of views of any cartoonist ever, and... Uh, you know, I, I'm going to miss his commentary on – I missed his commentary this last uh, few weeks on, on everything that's gone down in this country. So, so uh, no, I, I found my niche there. As Are a, you capable of that at this point in your life? I mean, you're kind of pissed off like I am. We're all pissed off. I'm, I'm using my pissed off at Baltimore Positive and trying to make the world a better yeah. place and moving this forward, but I'm not going to shut up. I mean, right. that, that ain't happening. Me either. Uh, yeah, and I know that about you. I mean – it would seem to me you could sharpen your pen and really get after this in the way you got after Bob Ursay at one point, right? I mean, sort of famously sort of cut your teeth here on the Bob Ursay thing. But, exactly. But your background in Buffalo, like, I, I mean, I, I don't want to be offensive. I loved you forever. I've often wondered, like, where was the calling for that? And then I think back to, like, we had whole newspapers that were trying to do all sorts of things to appeal to people through words, through pictures, through images, maybe the sport – but sports cartoon who was the first sports cartoonist did it did it start as a 
a tabloid thing in the 50s or 60s in New York or something? I mean, what made you it believe you back, could get a gig being a sports cartoonist? It goes back longer than that, Ness. I mean, it, there's a great history of sports cartooning in this country. And, but I grew up as a kid reading Bill Gallo. And before him was Willard Mullen. Those are two of the great New York sports cartoonists. And so I, I had some of that. Uh, I had Mad Magazine in me from growing up like you did probably. I mean, you're like Howard Stern. You grew up like literally in the same era in the same place, right? Like his story would be your story in that way as a child, I mean, right? I think we're both, yeah, maybe so. You know, like I, I, I appreciated Howard Stern too. Uh, but I, my sports cartooning stuff comes from Bill Gallo and from Bruce Stark and from Willard Mullen in the New York papers. And uh, that, where and that was kind of the heyday of it, and uh, and still there were some newspapers that carried sports cartoonists. Not every newspaper could afford to do that. I just happened to find my way in it in Buffalo, which was a great sports town. No, but if you grew but, up out on the island, you're picking up papers, right? Because you're watching the Mets, who stink for the most part, right, in the 70s. And, you know, I've never known you to be a hockey guy or, you know, like there's certain things I – I've never known you to be a golf guy. I, I don't know what right. you watched in the 70s that inspired you to be a sports. Probably the Jets, right? I mean, after Namath that's, and whatever. It's so, it's so ironic I ended up in Baltimore because, you know, I, I became a sports fan in 69 when the Mets and the Jets and the Knicks beat the three Baltimore teams. And, you know. I My knew dad reminded me of that frequently, by the way. What's that? My dad reminded me of that frequently. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, I, you know, I would never root for New York teams now, except for I will root for Buffalo. But, but I, I uh, you know, back then I was all in on those, on those teams. And my, and my relatives all root for those teams. The ones that still live on Long Island still root for those teams. Mike Sigliano is my I'm guest. I'm still Baltimore now, man. Oh, I, dude, there's nobody more Baltimore than you. I mean, you've driven – how many image? What have you dr uh, drawn the most in your life? Would it be Bob Ursay? Would it be Ray Lewis? Would it be the uh, Bird? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like literally, what what would uh, it be? Well, I did the Bird cartoon for three years on the front page of the Sun every day. So the same kind of Bird tradition that the Sun always had. By the way, the greatest thing you've ever done for me was the Angry Angelo bird. series. You, you did an Angry Angelo series for me. I, I you did Little Peters. Ness, I, I show that to other people. I show that in my classes. You had this idea of doing uh, Peter Angelo. Little Peters. Get the bird. And it's very funny. Like the art on it is very funny. <laughs> I just brought it out the other day. I should have. I oh. it for you. It's, it was a great concept. Yeah. You, you know what, man? I, I should have been better at show and tell today for this. But so you've driven, you've, you've driven, drawn drawn the bird more than you've drawn any other thing yeah think? Ursay, right albert bell would be another you know like there are some guys but those went away quickly bell wasn't here long no, I mean, I know, but he was such a good fodder for cartoons you know same for eddie same for you know like there's just some guys that you know you you, you draw a lot and peter angelos i've drawn him i've probably drawn him the second most more than Ursay because i really only had that small couple of year period with Ursay where Angelos was, you know, many years while I was here in town. And I love drawing him. Well, and baseball was king too. I mean, it, it was, he gave you your Steinbrenner. Yes. Exactly. He literally did. Exactly. You know, so, so. You no. talk about this bat shit stuff that's going on with this guy in DC. This yeah. literally is how the baseball team has been operated, has been intimidation. Peter Schmuck once said to me, he hates everything he can't control and abuses everything he does. All right, there you go. Now, Peter Schmuck would never write that, and he'll never take credit for it, but he said it, so give him credit. So if you see Pete, let him know. That was the greatest quote that he never put in the newspaper. I'll but, let but, him know that, of Yeah, course. but, but right just, here. you know, when, when those type of things happen, if you're a political cartoonist, no offense to our country, and he's wrecked it, uh, but Donald, drawing Donald Trump every day is probably more interesting than drawing Barack Obama or even Jimmy Carter or George Bush or anybody else, right? Like you, right, those, it, those kind of, you know, as a cartoonist, uh, you dream about people like Donald Trump or Robert or, say, you know, these kind of car cartoon, you know, 
to some villains. I'll, I won't say to all, but to some. Well, and to so a writer, that, I would call it, them it, cartoonish characters. Sure. Donald sure. Trump is a buffoon, has always been a buffoon. He has been characterized and cartooned more than anyone in New York as being a buffoon. And oh, yes. I mean, this, this is, this is the, 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 the guy for cartoons. I mean, no one has, has, there's never been more cartoons drawn about anyone than this particular person. So I'd, I'd agree, you know, and, and all deserved, I might add. <laughs> but, that, but I guess the, the, the point with this would be personality that goes behind a cartoon. Sure. It's very hard to make Cal Ripken a cartoon. Sure, exactly. And, and, and maybe Joe Biden, too. Like, you know, the way cartoonists solve, there's an, there's an uh, evolution that happens with cartoonists. Like when Donald Trump first came in, people picked out his hair, but then other things came and, and other cartoonists borrow from others. And eventually a cartoon character, as, a, as opposed to just a caricature, you know, evolves and everyone uses that formula to, for that guy. And, and you teach uh, this, don't you? You do. You teach. I do. I teach a couple of. Uh, I can tell, dude. Classes. Oh, man, I want to be in the class. Barry and I want to sign up. Cartooning with Versig. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, uh, you, you don't. I, I either teach sixth through eighth graders nests or over 60. So you can't. Unfortunately, you don't qualify for any of my classes. I'm almost 60. I'm almost. <laughs> no, 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 no. The great no, Versig, no, no, Mike Versigliano, is here. He is, uh, he's, go ahead and drink something, man. He's my lifelong friend. Uh, we're just jamming about Buffalo this week and, and the Bills and the Ravens. Um, give me a little COVID state for you and Terry and your lives and how you're doing and your, your thoughts about sports and football and baseball. I mean, our lives were about music and going out and I mean, you've traveled and your boys have been all over the world and they're in rock bands. By the way, uh, you're, you're, your lad, who is the uh, uh, one of the patrons of the uh, the Trump Beatles, yes, I want to give a massive shout out uh, over the last four years to the Trump Beatles. Yeah, maybe the two best things that ever came out of this administration: the Trump Beatles and that giant balloon from England. Those are my two favorite, you know, Trump by byproducts. But they're great. Both boys are in the Trump Beatles. Uh, I encourage everyone to, to find them on Facebook and on YouTube. They're awesome. Uh, to they're going to be really big, really, really big. <laughs> exactly. they're, really, they're really great. So, yeah. They really should be on Saturday Night Live. Like, I, I had a friend that worked at NBC, and I threw her a note, and I'm like, somebody should put this in front of Lauren Michaels or somebody three doors down from Lauren Michaels to at least look at it and say, I, you should put these kids on for two minutes. I've because been begging them. They've kind of like – this, this disassembled, but I've been begging them to come back for the inauguration and do a, a, a Zoom, but I, I'm not sure it's going to happen. You know, it's like the real Beatles. They just, they just can't figure out how to get back together again. Is anyway, Yoko involved? What's that? Is Yoko involved? <laughs> no. You know, I see the Facebook Yoko. threads. So the <laughs> other day I uh, said after these criminals, these traitors, these seditionists uh, with guns and militia tried to come in and, uh, and, and, and abduct and it, whatever they were it, it going to do. After that, uh, you know, it, it, I, you know I, I put some stuff up and I, I said, maybe there's a seditionist camp. And I look like, where's the westernmost part of Alaska that you could swim to Russia? Because that's kind of where they want to be. And I, I, so I found the airport there and I put it up. And someone, you know, people were putting that nah, Cuban. I'm like, Cuba's good. The weather's too good. And someone said, Yoko Ono played 24 hours a day. Oh, uh, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and I thought, you know, we could still have a little fun with this. You know, we have to have a sure, little comedy in our lives. We've been trapped in our homes wearing masks. Missing yeah, sports, I though, for you. Are you watching, like, I mean, we're all watching the NFL, but, like, this has been the weirdest thing to not go to a ball game and have a beer. We're sick, you know. Oh, all of that. You know, it's been you know difficult for everyone, obviously, and you know all all our trend, everything we we do mostly has been on Zoom. We've rarely seen our boys. We the one time we got to see Tup was when he announced that he was having twins when we were up in Brooklyn where he ends up twins Basil twins identical twins identical twins man they know everything now they spoil all the surprise man yeah exactly. you know no it was awesome it was he awesome. didn't do anything stupid like shoot himself in the nuts with a you know some powder thing when they do the no, blue and the no, pink no, they didn't do no, any no, of that no. right. it was planned twins weren't planned but that but he's a comedian I figured he'd make something you know I mean he's, he'd do he's some Brett Turhune take <laughs> on it or something you know 
But through COVID, you know, Terry and I, we've been, we've managed to, we live near a park. So we, we live near Herring Run Park. So we are fortunate to be able to do our walks. We do kayaking. We do a fire pit in the backyard. And those three things have kept us going and allowed us to be social with, with a few of our friends in, outside, you know, in a safe kind of environment. So if it wasn't for that, I think we'd be struggling with it a lot more, you know, and we all wish it, it ends soon and, you know, can hug each other again and all that, all that kind of stuff. But yeah, some sport, the sports stuff has kind of kept me going through it. I have to admit, I kind of checked out on baseball, but I've been all in on the NFL stuff this year. Yeah, I called it Eddie Fainer. You know, I said it felt like it, it felt like a, 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 a barnstorming tour. Yeah, it, you know, sure. it didn't, it didn't, it didn't even feel like a tournament. It felt like an exhibition, especially like with these clowns. I mean, it just, it felt like a Arizona spring league. I mean, literally, and I, I don't yeah. mean to be mean, but like, I got stuff I can be doing. You know what I mean? Like in August, I, I built a new company. I mean, we're all trapped at home. My wife survived cancer. We, we're yeah. waiting to go to a Pearl Jam concert, a Rolling Stones concert. But between here and there and the safety of the vaccine and, you know, where we are, the NFL has been the one thing that is given, right? Yeah. And, and here we are. And, uh, you know, for Buffalo to not be able to go and, and be there. I mean, Nashville – you know, they hadn't had a home playoff game since Stover beat them back in 09, right? So all these years, we've had parades and this and that. And, yeah, no. You know, they I, haven't had a game, and they can only have 50,000 people. There, there's a point in all of this where I'm going to be really sad when the football season's over because it's it sort of carried me through the weeks here. And I, you know, as a guy who's done this for a living for 30 years, um, I've been very appreciative that they've played, but I've also been very, very realistic of like what that sham of a college football season looked like. Yeah. People doing it when it is Eddie Fainer. That was an Eddie Fainer football game. Yeah, on I, for me. I agree. The NFL, for whatever reason, and part of it is, you know, a lot of us play fantasy football. I'm in like a postseason fantasy football thing, and that, that's been fun too. So, yeah, I, I, the NFL for me, it's been – other than the weird cardboard cutout fan stuff, you know, has been, uh, and we did an exercise on that in, in my cartoon class. And, and that's, I, I appreciated the cardboard cutout fans. So my kids were drawing cartoons about cardboard people, which, which were really funny. So, so the, thank, thanks, thank goodness for the NFL season. The final four in the AFC for me is so interesting because, you know, here you got Buffalo who, you know, where I lived and where I have a great allegiance and Baltimore, of course, but also Cleveland, where I lived for a year as a cartoonist and Kansas City, where Doc lives. And he's a big Chiefs fan. So I've got four teams in this thing. He right won now. last year. Tell him to get off the bus, up. you know. Say again? He won last year. Tell him to get off the bus, you know. <laughs> yeah. I know Doc well, will be I mean, watching. I, I have to tell you. You know, I've got my Ravens hat on, but I got to put my Bills hat on, man, because... Oh, you did do that. Did you just do that? I just did, man, because I, I'm, I will be rooting for the Bills in this, uh, in this particular game. I mean, I, I, it's the best of both worlds for me. One of my... You just feel like they're never going to have another chance, right? Because exactly. you're a Bills fan. I mean, we've not gone yet. <laughs> so I, I, I will be rooting for Buffalo. Of course, if... If the Ravens win, I'll be thrilled for us here, too. And uh, either way, I'm going to have a team going to the championship game, so I'm excited about that. But I based my Buffalo uh, choice on the fact that two people in my family are born in Buffalo. Only one is born in Baltimore. And, of course, I'm a New Yorker, too. So I got a root for the Bills. They've never had a parade, you know, all of that. Rasig, oh. I've uh, pulled the picture up. Anybody oh, watching on, out awesome, there? Man. Uh, th 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 that is your hat. I was wearing Zubaz pants that I will try to share <laughs> later. I have a picture yeah. of me in the Zubaz. I was, I was schmoozing a really good-looking girl at a piano bar, and there's a picture of me doing it that, you know, Johnny Raff took. Because Johnny Raff went on that trip with me. Johnny Raff took this picture That's down, great. like, on the court. This was taken at the Target Center at a Minnesota Timberwolves game on the Friday night before the Super Bowl. We went to the game, and Warren Moon showed up on a screen, the big screen, and I said, he's here. Warren yeah. Moon is here, and I'm wearing Bill's stuff. What the hell am I doing? You got it. And I went it. down to him, and I put my arm around him. I'm like, 
Of course. Mark Moon, I'm your biggest fan. Mr. Moon, Mr. Moon. I'm not really a Bills fan. I'm not really a Bills fan. It's like that guy carried a Confederate flag into the Capitol. I'm not really a Confederate flag. You know, um, so. I, I always appreciated that about you, Ness, that you, and I could never do it. You know what I mean? Like when, when, when we got the team here in Baltimore, you burned your, your Oilers stuff. And, you know, I could whoa, never... Whoa, 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 whoa. I didn't burn it. I found it last week. It was in a box. Okay. Well, whatever. I, I literally, I have it all is, of it. I, I found everything. It. I could never have done it. I mean, that's... You're the real, you know, all-in Ravens fan. Uh, you're the great Ravens fan. I well, am- I told Blaine Bishop about that last week because I took a picture of him with the Oiler helmet. And I said to him, I'm so elated that I took that picture because it's so classically Oiler and if they had still worn those jerseys, which they should have the last 25 years, right? Yes. It, but the fact that I took a picture – and, you know, Dan Pastorini has done stuff with me. Do you know I met Earl Campbell once? No, no, that's, that's NFL. Oh, that's my there. God. Uh, you know, I, like my Oiler fandom, I found all these old pictures, and I think I told you this, Rasig, like – for me, I, I, there's a point here where I'm going to, like, give it all away. Like you said, if anybody wants a hat, right? You know, I got 6,000 of them. 300 of you come and take 300 of my hats, and you like them that much. Go have them, you know? Yeah. And I've got all this autographed rock star stuff and, like, all of this stuff, and I'm trying to find it. I, here's my Earl Campbell picture, and I, I do want to share this because, like, this was my childhood hero, right? Like, if I would have told you that I could – and he player. told me to sit on his lap. He's like, sit up on my lap, man. You know, so like I, you know, like I sat next to him and I'm like, man, I love you. And he can't even walk, dude. You know, so like and this was six, seven years ago in, in Dallas at one of the Super Bowls. But um, but I was such an oiler guy, and you and I and Judy Haig and Steve Edgar and uh, and your wife, we got in the car, we drove up the Buffalo, we drank beer, I ran around in my my Elvin Bethea jersey. <laughs> I you had know. A little- I had all those posters that I'd made about the war and about the Raiders that we were holding up throughout that game too. And, and, uh, and my friend, Eric Brady, who I think, you know, Eric, who's uh, the great sports writer for USA today, it turned out was on the net crew for the, his friend put him on the net crew. So he was driving around that stadium in a, in a golf cart at the end of that game. He told me the next day, he was so pumped up. That was a great victory for Buffalo. And of course their first, their first Super Bowl appearance was that, that that game kicked that off. So, so it's a great game to be at. Mike Rosigliano is here. Uh, he has spent a lot of time in Buffalo. He's uh, married into Buffalo. He yeah. has admitted that he put a Buffalo hat on in the middle of this conversation. I mean, well, I mean, you know, I love both teams equally, but I, you know, Buffalo's never had a parade. Maybe they won't even get a parade. No, there's no parade. That's why I said let the Browns win. You know what I mean? This is their year, you know? <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, of course, I, I will be so fired up if the Ravens, you know, go on to win this thing, too. You know, you know, I'm if we win, we're going to be rooting for the Browns on Sunday because yeah. we get the championship game here in a game we can't go to. Well, we both probably figured that we were going to Kansas City this week. We pro- both probably I had a flight to going. Kansas City. I, you know, I thought maybe I'll drive. You and I have driven to Buffalo five times. I, you know, I was like, yeah, maybe I'll drive to Buffalo. And then the more I thought about it, like the COVID testing and the same, I'm like, you know what? Couch is going to be fine. Zoom. I, I talk to John Harbaugh after the game whenever I want. You know what I mean? He's in my phone. Right. So, like, it's cool, you know. And, but it, it – well, it guess, has been guess, it has been less fun. You will admit that, right? Like, yeah, you don't they, have well, people running around the house high five, and it's not. Oh, it's a different course. experience. I met, you know, uh, they they had a picture. Uh, uh, Robin and Nick posted a thing on Facebook the other day about the Titans game. You know, the first the, in the fir- in the in the two thousand year, and uh, uh, it it was such a great memory for all of us because uh, Dan Rodericks had had written to me and said. Uh, do you know any place I could watch the game? And I said, you should watch it with us, you know? So he comes to Nick's house and everything that happens in that game, one of the great games ever with. So you watch the pregame with Marty Bass and all of us being goofs down at Whiskey Joe's at Nick the Greek's house. Yes, of course. With Dan Rogers. With Dan Rogers. Man, that's a small to more story if I've ever heard one. and And Dan was like, blown away like he was there and people were jumping all over the house and literally rocking the house and he wrote that in the paper the next day about how the house shook but 
it was that kind of game for all of us as Ravens fans. You know, just big plays in now that. Now, when Stokely game. caught that ball, forget it. Yeah. Just oh, forget it, was, it. it. It was the greatest. And, of course, that sent <laughs> us on, on to the Raiders game. And we never thought we were going. We just had a friend that was going that said, you know, you get me a ticket. I'll fly us out there. So we ended up at that Raiders game. I remember you calling me, and you were in the other. I said, "Dude, I'm not going over there. I'm not walking. I'm, I can't." I'm, yeah. You, oh, you were in, you were in the Al Davis section up yes. on the roof. And we, and I, I know I've told this story, and I'll tell it again because it's so much fun. We sat, and and the and the Ravens had told me when I got the tickets. Kevin Burns said this. Don't wear any purple you know just they were telling black. everybody not i wore yeah. black yeah right. so i wore black but i wore raven's gear but we had uh edwin mulatalo's four samoan cousins right behind us well he's from 15 miles away <laughs> and they were and they were bigger than edwin mulatalo all four of them were so no one gave us any grief at that game uh, they didn't care. They were just doling it out to all the, the, the sick Ra uh, Raiders fans. And when Shannon Sharp caught that pass, I literally jumped into the arms of one of those big, giant Samoan guys behind me. It was such a fun day, you know? I sat in the press box until the game started, and I was trying to figure out where – because I didn't like – I never sat in the press box in the early part of my – ever. First 20 years of Ravens, I was never in a press box. 15 years, I'd say. Uh, right. When Twitter started, the press box in the second half became, you know, a way to communicate, right? Right. Uh, but so on the road, I always sat with fans. I always sat in the state. It's fun for me. You know, I would, I just, I took fans to games. I did, did all of that. Go look it up. But, you, you know, that game there, there were no fans. There were no Raven fans at that game. But like, obvious purple, at, you know, there were no sections of Ravens yes, fans. right. Exactly. And Dave Rather, who owns Mothers, my neighbor Dave had a, a little skybox that he had. I mean, in the old Oakland Coliseum, when I'm saying a skybox, I'm just saying it had wood and glass. Okay, yeah. And I went down to sit with him because I could cheer there. I couldn't yeah. cheer in the press box. That's, that's the bottom line. I mean, the bottom line is I couldn't cheer. Yeah. And so I could cheer in the press. And this was a place I could cheer because it was all Ravens fans. A bunch of Ravens fans came all in. They're like, it's safe down here. And it was kind of close. You know, I was on the 30. It was, on the, it was in the goal. And I saw where it was. I saw inside the glass. They were all wearing purple. And I'm like, okay, that's where I'm going. I got down. There was a little treacherous getting down there. And once I got down there, I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving the piss. You know, I'm not leaving, you know. And you, yeah. there was no bathroom. This is, the, this is the Oakland. We never dared go to the bathroom. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not go they were trying to make me drink. I'm like, I am not drinking unless I'm going back to the press box. <laughs> yeah. The press exactly. box barely had running water. It was, I mean, this. Sure. This was 20 years ago. And they're still playing baseball there, literally, yeah, that's right? Quite remarkable. I love that place, dude. It <laughs> smells like Memorial Stadium. We're seeing. I mean, it's just so. I get over there. Stover missed that kick, so I was at that vantage point of the end zone that Shannon Sharp ran away from us yes. on on the touchdown, and then Stover missed the kick on my end. And right. when Stover missed the kick, there were Raiders fans through the glass, and they were beating on the glass. <laughs> Yeah. And this little boy gives me a double middle finger. <laughs> little seven-year-old boy wearing a, I don't know, a Rich Gannon jersey, double double Dutch in me. Maybe it was Ken Stabler. <laughs> and I'll never forget that. And then the glass broke. Oh. The glass, like, it didn't shatter. I mean, it shattered, but it didn't break. Yeah, right. It, it was that, it had that bullet look, look to it, you know? And I'm like, I'm getting the hell out of here. So with about eight minutes left to go in the game, I had always told Kevin Byrne, and maybe he remembers this, maybe he doesn't, but I'd always told him, I said, when we go to the Super Bowl, and we were only three-year-old franchise, four-year-old franchise time, right? So, right. but I said, we ever go to Super Bowl, I'm going to ride the elevator down with you. Because I rode the elevator down with him after wins and losses and like picked his brain a little bit on the way, in the old stadiums back in the 90s, you know? And I'm always wearing like Ravens gear. I'm wearing a j jersey. You know, I'm, I'm an idiot. There's a picture of me wearing the dunce cap in San Diego, standing up on a stool, listening to Ted Marchabroda. <laughs> I have hilarious footage of all of this. But so I said to Kevin Byrne, I'm, I'm going to ride the elevator down if we're going to go to the Super Bowl. And we were obviously, you know, like that game was, 
we were winning enough. It was a close game, but our defense, nobody, yeah, they weren't scoring. Oh, Goose was wearing. I remember their quarterback went out. When right. And they brought in Bobby Hoy. Right, right. right. Goose is wearing his sunglasses, the whole deal. And I <laughs> rode the elevator down with Kevin Byrne, you know, down. In, and there was violence. I, mean, I, I saw cops bleeding. I mean, I, there, there was a, it was a really bad scene. Right. I mean, I didn't, they didn't want us to go out on the field to get the trophy. None of the Ravens people were allowed out. And then they kind of cleared it out. And I have pictures on the days with me and David holding the trophy with Art and Martin O'Malley. And, yeah. like, I mean, that was a – dude, that was a I, – I didn't cry until I got out of the tunnel. I was in a locker room. All those pictures with Goose wearing the, the Mickey Mouse shirt and Burnett. Yeah. I was in all of that, right, in that soup. And I walked out, and Mike Flynn's mother grabbed me, and I started bawling. She started uh, bawling. <laughs> Super Bowl, man. But Buffalo, you've never won. I was sitting three feet behind you, right? The first time you lost, we watched it. We watched the first two in your place. Yes. And then I wound up going to Minneapolis for the other one. Well, you um, didn't. I didn't. I never have been to a Super Bowl. So you've got, you went to that one. You, I never went to a Super Bowl. So. Well, we got to fix that, Rasig. Oh, no. I'm fine. I, you know, watching. I, I, I'll, I'll just. Be happy having been to those two great championship games for me. And Dude, uh, that Buffalo game, that 51-3, to three, that was a party. Oh, it was a party from the get-go, you know, and that's – I'll always remember that and being with Steve and Judy and, and the trip up and the trip back from that, too, and all your escapades, too. So, you know, it was – it's a memorable trip. You don't remember my- all my escapades. You weren't there for all of it. <laughs> Well, Sprata the, the took comeback, a the comeback too, but we all I remember about the night before that game, and I'm not making this up. This is true. I'm 21, 20 was 21. Yeah, it was 19. I was 21, so I could get into bars. It was 19 in like in Canada, right? Or or 18? It was something crazy yes, in Canada. That's true. It might have been 18 in Buffalo at the time. I'm not even sure. It was at one point. So y- your nephew Mike, who's become my lifelong friend, who is from Depew. Yeah. Um, he and I went out skirt chasing, and this was the night before the game. This, we were in a bar at 4 o'clock in the morning listening to the doors. Yeah. Like, Buffalo bars were open really, really late, they, right? Yes. Historically? Historically, still to this day, I'm probably not during COVID, but prior to that, yes. All I remember was being 21 and thinking – you guys stay open at 4 a.m. I'm moving to Buffalo. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the only time I ever thought I was moving to Buffalo, by the way. Just they're just, open know. till four because it is Buffalo. <laughs> and well, so it's something to do. Yeah. A little beef on whack, uh, you know, a little libets and, uh, and, and maybe some wings and anchor bear and all that good oh, stuff. Yeah. Dude, love you. And uh, thanks for visiting. I mean, is there anything you want to say about the bills other than you're supporting them? I mean, uh, you're pooping I'll on Lamar no bills, right now. But I also love the Ravens. So, you know, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I think, you know, Buffalo would have done better to have played Pittsburgh than they will to play the Ravens. The Ravens are a force right now. So, so I think it's two teams playing at the top of their game, going against each other. We should get a great game. I think there's going to be a little snow for the game, a light sprinkle perhaps. So it'll be a very fun watch for all of us. Not as good as that hockey game was up there though, right? No, 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 not as good as that. But Nothing I mean, will touch that be, hockey game it's up gonna there. Be, it's going to be fun. I'll say go to both teams, but – you know, I got my Bills hat on for the rest of the week. For Sig, this plague has been a mess. I mean, not just for government and for life and for financial issues and for friends of mine and, like, all the, all the awfulness. But I've been going to Cleveland for 21 years. I've never missed the Ravens game in Cleveland. And I had the flight and the day – and my wife was away. I could have gone. I mean, I had my cat, right? But I'm like – I'm not going to freaking Cleveland on a Monday night in December. Like, I'm just not sitting in oh, empty half. Wow. And I wind up missing, you, like, the Willis Reed game. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I said it the other day. I said the two most amazing things uh, that I've seen this year were, of course, the Capitol insurrection, of course. And I say that amazing in a sad way. But the second most amazing thing was that Monday night game. It was, it, it was exhilarating. It was, it was crazy, man. It was so much fun. Well, Rasig, I hope you don't have too much fun rooting for the Bills. 
<laughs> on Saturday night. Uh, you know, I'll be thinking of you. So let's see. Let's see. What, let's see how it all plays out. It's going to be a lot of fun. My brother from a Brooklyn mother, uh, uh, Mike Rosigliano, longtime sports cartoonist. I'm only holding this one. I mean, I got so many cartoons that I've touched in the land. By the way, you, you're on the set every day. Right? So you did this for me. And by oh, the way, yeah, this, right. this is the sports first pin down here. I don't, I don't know if you can really see it. I, I don't want to pull it off. Yeah. I'll never get it back on. But yeah. this is the original sports first pin. So you're always with me, Rasig. All right? So there. And you with me, my friend. So let's, let's you know, um, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I was there when Thurman Thomas lost his helmet. So, you know, and I'll be here <laughs> for this as well. Say hello to Joe D for me. You got it. Uh, we're having Hall of Famers on this week. We're going to have Bills. We're going to have Buffalo people. I've just decided to have a little bit of spirit about all this. We're going to talk about government and democracy. You bet your ass we're going to do that. Johnny O is here. Calvin Ball is here. Stuart Pittman is here. Uh, Adrian Jones is here. You can find all that out at Baltimore Positive. Nancy Pelosi's been here. She'll be here again. Uh, In the meantime, she needs to go can save I the share, government. So. Can I share one thing with you before I go? Of course, oh, man. Got- My time is your time. I had I got a, a chainsaw for t- my wife this year for for Christmas uh, because we have a fire pit and I made her a practice log. I just wanted to show that to you. Oh, nice! By the way, this fire pit's kind of famous because it's how I ever acquired the nickname Nasty Nestor, right? Like, so uh, I famously babysat Rasig's boys when they were young. <laughs> And uh, I lost a bet, a, a Philadelphia Phillies, uh, L.A. Dodgers game at the vet. I said I would babysit your kids. The answer to the question turned out to be a, a future Oriole who was a dear friend of mine who we lost recently, Todd Froworth, who was one of the great guys ever. Um, he, his first name was Todd because you came up with that. Uh, you must have been playing, like, rotisserie baseball or something. Yeah, that's so you, how the only reason I knew that, of course. Oh, it was 1989, right, yeah. exactly. So – I babysat your kids. They called me Nasty Nestor because I sort of overcooked some meat on your fire pit. So <laughs> okay. to hear about your fire pit 30 years later, let's go. What do you got for me? Well, no, this is Terry's chainsaw practice log. I wanted to give her a log that she could practice on because she's never had a chainsaw or worked a chainsaw. I don't think she should have a chainsaw. This is the, this is the practice log that I have for, uh, for Terry right here. This is it. She'll be able to use a chainsaw on this uh, at some point and learn how to use it. I hope she doesn't screw it up. Because <laughs> that would be like the guy who shot himself in the nuts after he broke into the Capitol. You know what I mean? I, we wouldn't want to have that happen. We're uh, saying I love you, man. Be well. Take care of yourself. Right. Take, take care right, of my guys. best. Congratulations on the grandchildren. Thanks so much. We're fired up about that and the game this weekend. But when's that supposed to happen? Do we, 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 we know a gender? Do we, what do we know here? Boy, twin, identical twin boys. And what, what, what month is this happening? April uh, 2000 of uh, this year. April. Well, Terry's here. Now the show's getting here's good. Terry. Why am I going to leave now? Here's Greetings. Gra- here's, How are you? Grandma Terry or future here's Grandma Terry. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are hilarious. Thank you very much. We're going right, to step out and take a break. Buffalo, go Buffalo if they beat us, but they better not beat us. How about that, all right? All right. All right, oh, Matt, take care. All I remember about that day, now that Terry is here, is they still play the Bills make me want to shout because I saw them do that last week. They still do that. But the thing I remember was mighty taco, mighty (laughs) taco. They gave tacos away, and there was some company (laughs) called Mighty. I had to look up Mighty Taco. I've never had a Mighty Taco in my life, but if I went to Buffalo Saturday and they weren't going to stick things up my nose to try to get – you know, just – I'm not going to the game Saturday, but I would go to Mighty Top. That's surprising, but I mean, I get, I get it. You know, I get it. So that's why, that's why Bill's Mafia, you know, entertains the whole country, basically. They wanted me to go to Tonawanda for a COVID <laughs> test at sixty-five dollars. <laughs> All right, be good, guys. See you. There you go, Mike and Terry uh, Rasigliano, uh, better known as Rasig. The, uh, the, the, the chief cartoonist of all things, me, us, WNST, and literally every other media organization in the city. We are WNST.net, AM 1570. Unlike Rasig, we want the Ravens to win here at Baltimore Positive. <laughs>